Hi guys, Netflix just dropped a brand new dating show on January 23, 2024. I believe this is the first season of the show. The details of this show is that five beautiful single ladies and a bunch of eligible guys set off on a 30-day journey to some seriously dreamy places across Japan. They go on dates, trying to find that special connection and spark, but there's a crazy twist, the guys are on a time limit, and they might get booted off at any moment. Each participant is provided with a cell phone to facilitate communication throughout the experience. It seems like a lot of emotions will be running high since this is perceived to be a serious reality show where they will actually date in the real world. Most Japanese dating shows' final matches usually end up dating for real post-show. In this one, the women are granted a single opportunity to propose when a guy's time is up. If he accepts, they become engaged. If he declines, she must leave the show immediately by herself. The women can choose not to propose to anyone and stay in the game, hoping for a better connection with another guy. The unique quality I find exciting about it is that they are aiming for marriage. I feel like generally, when people go on dating shows, it is their chance to show their charms and gain more exposure, so undoubtedly, this may be one of the reasons why the participants are on the show but also, we are made to understand that the ultimate goal of the show is marriage and the absolute power to make that happen is with the women. So I'm really pumped for all the emotional roller coasters that'll unfold in the coming episodes. Currently, Netflix has released four episodes, so let's dive into episode one by meeting the participants. Let's meet the ladies first. Nona, Kanona Shiba, 35 years. She's an actress and a TV personality. She wants to jump right into marriage and skip the dating phase. Anit Sumura, 28 years old, works for a foreign company. She just wants to marry someone she loves more than anyone else in the whole world. She wants someone she can keep falling in love with. This is achievable if both partners can work hard for it. Sometimes, the love will go away and come back as long as you and your partner are friends. Saki Kamada, 27 years old, is a yoga instructor and she is into guys who are good-looking. She's used a lot of dating apps and has met about 50 men through those apps. Shizuka Ito, or she for short, is 32 years old, she made a statement with her blue dress. She runs a spa and models. She wants men who earn at least 200k per year. Sayuri Fujita, or Sayu for short, is a nurse and a TV personality. She's the needy type and wants a man she can rely on. Now let's meet the men. Keisuke Hashimoto, or K for short. He is 34 years old and he works for a fund company. He was inspired to join the show to find a wife because it dawned on him he needed one when he went home for the New Year's and saw his older brother's wife cooking in the kitchen with his mom. Takayuki Toda or Taka for short is a 29-year-old cosmetic surgeon. His walk when he entered looked a little too robotic. Most likely the director may have done several shots of him walking in that scene. But hey, he is a cosmetic surgeon so that's very cool. And he wants to be his partner's biggest supporter, how sweet. Takuya Okane or Okapi for short. Is a 37-year-old model actor and events manager. He only goes into relationships that have the potential for marriage. Yuta Yanagawa is 30 years old and he works for an IT company. Yuki Fukuda or Fuku for short is the last member to come in. He is 31 years old and runs a marketing company. My first thought seeing him is about his hair, if it's not a traditional or cultural haircut, it might impact his first impressions with the ladies. He's really bold and self-confident to carry that hair. After they all met each other, they got the announcements through their phones that the men's time was limited and that only the women could propose. The ladies' reaction to the news varied and it's understandable that some were uncomfortable with the idea of proposing while others weren't. Only Sokka didn't have any issues with it. 
She's like I've been on many dates and I like to express my mind when I feel things, but she says, the issue is if she proposes to someone and that person rejects, now that will be a big problem and I agree. Their first vacation spot is on an island which they went to on the second day with a boat. They made some barbecue by the beach and Fuku showed off his charms through his cooking skills. Although the MCs think this might disrupt his connection since he was too focused on the food lol. Also, Shizuka dropped the bombshell that she prefers men who earn more than her. K asked her how much she was referring to and she literally said 200k. Okapi eliminated her from his list pretty quick as he expresses he doesn't earn that much. Taka who is a cosmetic surgeon said he met up to her standards so he is glad this increases his chances. But he said her statement got him thinking, I'm not sure what he meant by that. I think it's cool for women to aim high, but saying it to everyone might have been a mistake. It'll make her seem a bit shallow. Hope it doesn't mess up her love story on the island. She said that her parents argued a lot about money and this made her make money a priority in her marriage criteria, even though her friends have advised her not to be fixated on money. I guess she will learn a lesson or two before she leaves the island. I'm also wondering, what if the women do not propose at all, what if they don't find their person, what happens then lol. This show already feels like it will have some great dramatic moments. I'm hoping for some serious connections and deep love, and heartbreaks, but I feel the timing might be too short for the men though. Yudia and Hannah had a great chemistry right off the bat. And the panelists have the best reactions. You can totally relate to their reactions especially when they talked about the height difference between them both. The dude is so tall. Kay and Nona also hit it off quickly, talking about marriage and kids at lunch. They both want to be married within the next year. This is my type of show, they had some serious conversations happening here. After talking, they even swung together, looking already like a couple. Later at night, he texted her to have a chat, this sneaky-like chat will make them feel sweet, special and closer since it's like a little secret between them, I feel it'll make them place the other person as each other's number one from get-go. And their conversation was wholesome. They talk so much about the future about how they can travel together if he has to work abroad and stuff. And when he told her his first impression of her wasn't good, because he felt she was intentionally acting cutesy, and how his impression of her changed after they talked at lunch, was so honest and that was impressive. The next day, the ladies send a text to the person they'll like to date. If a man is chosen more than once, then he'll choose the person he prefers to go on a date with. Anna chose Yuda. Nona chose Okapi while the remaining three ladies chose Kay. Kay looked confused as hell as he wasn't chosen by the person he wanted the most, which is Nona. So far, the show looks promising. Will you also be watching this dating show on Netflix, or have you started already? If you have, what are your thoughts about the contestants, concept of the show and the panelists? Thanks for watching, hit the like button and subscribe if you want more content like this. Bye.